Hello, 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 hello. Miriam Numa here on Hope Alive. Hi, hello everyone. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope the God that we serve, who is ever faithful, is holding you and you are holding him. <laughs> because he always holds you anyway. Hallelujah. Um, yes, a quick video again to bless someone, encourage someone to say to you, don't you ever give up. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Without hope, there is no faith. You need your hope alive so that your faith can be strong. Hallelujah. Um, today, I'm just going to title this video, Push. Push. Um, today, I was speaking to a young lady by the grace of God that I encourage from time to time and support in her journey and all she's going through. And while I was speaking to her today, I was driving, actually. I was going out that then and she... she you know, she called and we, we got talking and this was the illustration I was giving to her and I felt that yes somebody else can, could be blessed by it as well so I want to share with you today you know today first I will start with a story okay I'll tell you a story of a pregnant woman a young woman young man both got married with all the excitement of being together finally, they in love, they got married, and looking forward to starting the family. And they discuss how many children they want to have. Before I go further, this story is about me and <laughs> my husband. Okay? So let me let me personalize it. So we've discussed the number of children we wanted to have. I came from a very large family and I said to my husband, I want many children. I want so many, many children. He said, are you sure you can handle that? I said, oh, why not? My mom had so many of us. All right. So we got married and almost straight away I got pregnant. I got pregnant and we were very excited. We were happy. Oh yeah, positive. We're going to have our baby. But not too long after that, <laughs> smiles wells. All the smiles were wiped off my face when the morning sickness started. To be honest, it wasn't just morning sickness. It was morning, it was afternoon, and it was evening, it was midnight, it was all day sickness. All day. Believe you me, all day sickness. It was so horrible. I puked at the sight of food, not even the smell of it. The smell one I could not stand. So no cooking went on in my house for that three months. Believe it. <laughs> Only God knows what happened with my husband. I couldn't cook. Neither would I even, I couldn't even stand the smell of any f sort of food. It was so bad. That even the sight of food on the television we sent me running to the bathroom to, po to puke. It was that bad. I vomited and vomited everywhere and anywhere I went to. It was so terrible. I felt so bad. It was constant sickness. I was so uncomfortable. The smell of people's perfume, my own perfume. I couldn't put on roll on without it. I couldn't stand my own body odor. It was just constant madness. But I went through it. To be honest with you, the thought of miscarriage crossed my mind. Oh, what, I can't go through this anymore. I can't go through this anymore. Let this be over with. But whenever I remember that nine months down the line, I'll be holding my baby. It gave me courage. It gave me encouragement. If you are a mother listening to this, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Towards the end of the pregnancy, Yes, the money sickness finished by the side, second trimester, but then the tummy has started bulging. I couldn't wear the clothes I would normally want to wear anymore. The scuffles began to come in. Third trimester, it got worse. My tummy grew bigger. I couldn't, I couldn't find a comfortable position to sleep at night. My feet became so swollen, very swollen that I could only wear, I couldn't even wear any form of shoe whatsoever. So that's fashion down the line for me. And I, my waist, <laughs> the pressure on my waist, is it the pressure on the bladder? The frequent bathroom breaks that you have to take? Every single thing, I began to count down. Literally, I was counting down by days. Every single day, I was counting down to the delivery of my baby. 
from time to time, just to encourage myself, I'll bring back the baby stuff I've bought, I will look at them, I will sniff them. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was crazy, eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably I was crazy, but that was the excitement I had. So it gave me the courage, in, in, the encouragement and the strength to endure what I was going through. And if I've ever had natural birth, not by CS, natural vaginal birth, you would know this pattern I'm about to describe. When, without epidural, I must stress that, without epidural, when it's time for the baby to come out, you've been waiting for this nine months, for this day. Let this baby get out so I can get myself back together. Let this baby get out so that I can rest, so that I can have my peace. Da, 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 da. I can't wait anymore. I can't wait anymore. And that day comes, and you are under that severe contraction contraction pain oh my goodness there's hardly anything we could use to describe that pain if you've gone through it especially when it begins to go pam 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 towards the end of it and then you manage to come to the point where the doctors felt that it's time to push and then at this point, probably you have exhausted, if you're like me, who had labored for 48 hours leading on to this time. That was my second child. I had natural birth with the second child. First one was with CS. So, yes, I still labored for several hours before eventually it was CS. But this one, I decided, I made a choice, and I did believed God for a natural birth. I had lost all energy. I had not eaten in these 48 hours. I was, I've lost strength. I've been in severe pain. So this time to push came. It was time now to bring forth that I have held on, that I have carried for the last nine months. It was time now to bring forth that baby that I have given names to, that I have bought stuff to, for, that I have believed, you know, I've, I've dreamt of. It was time to hold that baby. But then there was something in between me and that baby. It was something between me and that baby. And that was the delivery. The delivery. It came to the point, you know the worst if you've had a natural birth, the worst painful part is when the head has engaged. When the head has engaged and they say push, I felt like my waist was breaking in pieces. The pain was so horrible, so terrible like oh, oh, oh there, was, there are no enough words to describe that pain and i remember screaming out and said no i can't handle this anymore no i can't push anymore i'm tired i can't push and i remember the nurse saying a midwife beside me saying to me you can't give up now no you cannot give up now no, your baby's head has engaged. If you don't push now, you will lose your baby. And that word, you will lose your baby. Strength came from nowhere and I gave it my all. And my baby came out. Hallelujah. Oh, what a glorious sound when that baby began to cry. And I laid back exhausted. It was worth it at the end of the day. Why am I telling you this story, this gory, terrible story of my, of my pregnancy and delivery? It is very similar to the things that we go through in life. The reason why we bury our head down under our pain, we allow our pain to have the better of us is because we don't see what lies ahead. We don't see every woman, the re after the first I had, the second half, the third, Am I going to stop there? No, I got the fault. <laughs> and some women will go on and on. Why? Because the joy that comes. The Bible says for the joy that was set before Jesus, he endured the cross. If you know what lies ahead of what you're going through now, you will go through it with a different perspective. You will go through it joyfully. I'm here like the my midwife saying to you, don't you give up. It's not the time to give up. Push. I'm here to say to you, push. Maybe one more push. Maybe one more push is all you need. You can't give up now. You can't give up on that dream. You can't give up on that marriage. You can't give up on that child. You can't give up on that vision. You can't give up 
on anything, on your health, on your life. You can't give up now. No, you can't give up. You have come this far. I'm here to say to you, push. I'm here to say to you, push. I don't know how much, you know, I, I, I really don't want to take much of your time, but I want us to, you to look at Isaiah 60, 66, you know, where the Bible says from verse 7, it says, Before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a child. It said, Who had heard of such thing? That's verse 8 now. Who has seen such thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion traveled, she bring forth children. There is need for traveling before that child will come. That thing God needs to do in you and through you must come through traveling. Almighty and great God can hardly do anything but that, uh, apart from man, using man, and he will take traveling. Even to bring forth the Savior, he, he needed a man. He needed a woman. Mary to do make that happen. There has to be a traveling. There has to be a betting. That vision, that dream, that thing God has put in you, he needs traveling. He needs you to push it forward. Don't you ever give up. The pain is not to kill you. Your pain is not to, to finish you. Your pain is for you to bet something great and wonderful. I went through a pain that betted home her life. That pain, if you are listening to the spirit of the living God, whatever that pain is, is to bet something great in you. I just want to leave you with a word of uh, uh, prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know who is listening to me this, whatever the time is where you are. I pray for your divine intervention in their situation. I pray for courage. I pray for boldness. I pray that God, you will give them the strength to push forth that which you have put on the inside of them. I pray that they will not give up in this pain. I pray that they will not lose hope. They will not give up or throw in the tower at a time like this. I pray that you give them the strength to push through. That that divine, divine purpose that lies at the other side of this pain will bed forth, We come forth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is Mary again on Hope Her Life. I don't want to make my video long. But somehow, somehow, he keeps passing the 10 minutes. Anyway, I believe God has blessed you today. And I pray that you stay encouraged. God bless you. Please subscribe to my channel. Like my video. Share it to as many people who need the blessing of the Lord. So once again, push. Push. God bless you. Bye.